The Holy Gospel according to John, the 17th chapter, beginning with the 20th verse. Glory to you, Lord. I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be, they, they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one, and we are one, I in them, and you in me, and they may become completely one, so that, so that the world may know that you have sent me, and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am, to see my glory, which you have given me, because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you. And these, and these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known, so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. My son Carl was asking me about infinity the other day. He said, Dad, what does infinity look like? And I was trying to explain to him how much infinity is, how it's this number that keeps on going and going and growing and growing. It's like this number in a race with, without a finish line. It just keeps on going and going and growing and growing. I think I was kind of losing him. I was maybe even losing myself of the, how huge this number is. And, and, he, and then he, and he said, Dad, what, what does infinity look like here? Like, can we see infinity here? Uh, and then I, I thought for a while and, and I said, do you remember that time we were at Kohl's and you were trying on some pants and there was that mirror there that goes like this, kind of angled mirrors like this, and then the mirrors on the sides like this? And yeah, he could, he could recall that. And, and I said, Carl, at just at the right angle, you could see yourself and then you could see yourself a bunch of times. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Okay, this is... It's a fun thing to discover. If you look at just the right angle, you can see yourself lots of times, and then you kind of peek around this way, and you can see yourself kind of curve around a bunch more of you. And that's an infinite reflection of you, or who's ever in that mirror at the time, so that all may be one. It's an infinite reflection of the one. The infinite coming into touch with the finite. From today's gospel, that all may be one, is a two-fold statement by Jesus with infinite consequence. The first way that Jesus uses this statement, that all may be one, is the Trinitarian use. Jesus says that the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we are all one. The second way that this phrase, that all may be one, is used is for the disciples. Jesus says, just as the Trinity is one, so you, all my disciples, may be one. As you continue Jesus' work, that all may be one, a twofold statement with infinite consequence. And then my son said, okay, you've, you've told me what infinity looks like. It, he, he said, is it kind of like when you tried to divide 10 uh, into three parts? You, you go onto the calculator and you, you go 10 divided by 3 and you get 3 point 
Three, 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 three. Okay, okay, Carl, I get it. Three, I got you. Infinity. It goes on forever. He said, I, I, I see now kind of what it looks like. And as we began to shoot hoops out there in the, in the front driveway, a fleeting thought went through my head. And every time I get a fleeting thought, I, I, I really pay attention. <laughs> it was like fresh green spring. It's wonderful. And this thought was, we, I, ca I caught an idea of what it looks like, but what does infinity feel like? On this Mother's Day, let me count the ways. And in the counting of it, I hope that you feel it. Kids, raise your hand. Kids, raise your hand out there. Ah, Paul Jilson, you're, 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 you're pushing it there. But yeah, you're a kid at heart, I'll take it. So in counting the ways, I hope you feel infinity. Kids, how many times has your mother clothed you, fed you, tucked you in, hugged you, worried about you, dragged you to church? <laughs> Are you losing count yet, kids? Well, you should be probably in the thousands or like ten thousands at least by now. And throughout your life, this will be a race with no finish line, just like infinity. Teenagers, let me see her raise her hands out there. Okay, representing, yeah. You are not exempt from this counting. How many times has your mother driven you from place to place, from home to practice, to friends' houses, to here and there and everywhere? How many times has your mom worked her tail off with, without your thanks? How many times has your mom given it all even though her tank was on empty? How many times? I hope you feel it. I, I know that you can't keep up with the count but I know that you can feel your mom's infinite love for you. And also on this Mother's Day, know that your mother not only loves you, but your whole family as well. Her longing for togetherness, her longing for quality family time, and that gospel-centered mantra of peace that your mother has. Also, today's sermon title, that all may be one. Thank you, moms, for all of your love. Let's give our moms a hand. I almost deified moms there, and uh, in the message, that's a no-no. I don't mean to commit a, a heresy, so let's keep it real here. Yes, even moms run out of energy. Even moms grow short on patience. And yes, even moms sin. And so, therefore, even moms need the ever-abundant love and grace of God. It is only in Christ, however, that we see the infinite uh, become definite. In Jesus' prayer for you, his disciples, he says to you this twofold message once again. In essence, he says, he says, just as I am one here in the Trinity, in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Just as the Trinity is one, so may all you here at Trinity, may you all be one. And so that is, just as we begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we as disciples shall join our hearts, and our eyes, and our ears, in our voices, together in worship. And just as we are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we are gathered and forgiven 
so that we have peace, not only with God, but we have peace with our brothers and sisters in Christ as well. And as we go and are sent from worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we go in love. We are sent off into the world like your, your last, your youngest child going off to college. And that soon-to-be empty nest mom with messy mascara all over her face, uncontrollable tears. This is how we go with that love. I'll never forget the day that I left for college as an 18-year-old kid. I just did not get it why my mom was bawling. <laughs> I'm like, Mom, chill. It's just me. She bawled and bawled, I think, for two weeks. That's what my dad said. Just that empty feeling. And I was like, wow. I never realized, you know, the amount of love. Well, I mean, I did, but I was a teenager. Was... But that's what love does. Love hurts. And love hopes. And so we go this day on this last Sunday of Easter with our countenances lifted, our head held high as beloved children of God. We are blessed, and we are marked, and we are sealed in our baptism as we go in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, both seeing and feeling God's infinite love for us all, his disciples. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.